So analytical procedures then um, used in the planning stage. They are used in other stages as well, but let's have a look at it used in the planning stage. Obviously then it's going to be based on interim accounts and budgeting budgets and things like that. Uh, and we have to consider we're using them to try and help us focus on where we should be looking at most in the accounts. Okay, and I think this is best explained by a little example. So consider this right that in year one sales were a thousand, cost of sales were four hundred, and so therefore gross profit was six hundred. Now, if we're auditing year two and we see that sales are two thousand, we would expect cost of sales to be hopefully you can see double at eight hundred. And so therefore, as they've gone to a thousand, we automatically know that there may be a problem there. Not necessarily, we're not saying anything's been done wrong, but we're saying, hmm, this is interesting, let me go and audit that. Because if I don't audit it, if I don't order it well, then we're going to look back and think, well, why didn't we? Because it was obvious that cost of sales were higher, but we only know this through analytical procedures. So we would go and have a look at the cost of sales, we would discuss with management, we'd try and find out reasons why it was higher, we'd see if those reasons were in line with other expectations and other explanations we've had, and that's it, we've audited it. But we wouldn't know to look there without doing an analytical procedure at the start. So that's kind of how it works. So there's kind of a four phase process really. Phase one there, where you where the expectations are formulated so that if sales double, I would expect cost of sales to double. Phase two there, we identify the variances, so we expected cost of sales to be 800, they were actually 1,000, so a 200 difference. Phase three, investigate those differences, so go and have a look, why is it 200 difference? Speak to management, get evidence, do some testing, and then finally evaluate the impact is it because internal controls failed? Is it because management got, the, got it wrong in the first place? Or is it simply they did everything right and it's just gone up by 200? So evaluate the impact on the whole of the audit. So in a bit more detail, you're going to formulate uh, expectations. So that can come from the previous year's accounts, from budgets, from your knowledge of the industry. If the industry is doing well, you would expect the company's revenue to go higher. And any non-financial things like uh, you know that you've um, that more competition has come into the market or you've got a new CEO or something like that or you've had a big advertising campaign. So that's how we'll... Uh, that's how we'll get our expectations. Then we're going to identify the threshold, the variances. Uh, and obviously, if the variance isn't big, then the materiality threshold pops in and we wouldn't check if it was underneath materiality. And then we investigate the differences. So, investigation. First of all, you think of it, is this an inherently risky area? Are sales so high... Uh, or are sales recorded so low maybe because this is a cash based business and they're trying to keep the sales out if that's the case then it's an inherently risky business the reliability of the data these budgets etc are they reliable are they following the same accounting policies as the year before or do they need accounting adjustments still to be made to them talk to the management then Find out exactly, you know, do they have any ideas why the numbers will be so different? And then finally, once we've got all this information, think about other information that we've had or other evidence that we've got. And do they kind of fit together? Um, does it all work? Do they corroborate with each other? That's how you do an investigation of the variances. Okay, and then phase four, you evaluate the impact on the audit. Now, if the management say to you, hmm, I can't really explain why cost of sales are so high. Well, therefore, you've then got to worry because you've then got to think, well, if you can't explain it, that means the internal controls aren't very good. You're not on top of your business very much. We need to do more work on probably all areas. So try and evaluate the impact on the accounts and the audit as a whole.